Now in Toronto, we're hearing from Blue Jays president and CEO Mark Shapiro, as well as former Jays player Jose Batista, ahead of his retirement. Let's take a Thanks, listen. everybody, for being here. It's been uh, taking too long for this to happen. You know, it's something it should have done a couple years ago, like much in our world, but uh, incredibly excited to be here today. It's hard to believe and to reflect a little bit on the 10 years that uh, Jose Bautista spent with the Blue Jay organization. You can think about some of the greatest attributes, the incredibly powerful swing, the cannon for an arm. For me, the unbelievably intense work ethic, determination, um, commitment to his craft, because it really wasn't just a game, but it was a craft, you know, for Jose. The impact he made on so many with the relationships he formed <clears throat> throughout this organization um, and throughout this community. Um, there are stats and awards, uh, single season home run record, 54 home runs, six all-star games, three silver sluggers, uh, and really so much more being part of a team that reignited a spark for baseball throughout this country and throughout this city. Um, so much to consider and so much to, to think about. I really can't think of a player that should retire a Blue Jay more than Jose Bautista. So it's an incredible honor for me today to offer a one-day contract to Jose so that uh, he can rightfully retire a Toronto Blue Jay. So I'm going to sign this very official contract. <laughs> Would you do me the honor? And I guess I'll, I'll do the same. Thank you. Awesome. There it is. Thank you. So tomorrow we'll uh, one more incredibly honor, and Jose will take his place among Blue Jay greats as we elevate his name to the level of excellence. Um, be a great moment for him, for Nisha, for his girls. So excited to have them here to celebrate with the fans across this city, across this country, uh, and for the entire Blue Jay organization. Incredibly powerful moment. There's, it's a privilege to have him here, and it's going to be a privilege to have him once again in a Blue Jay uniform. And we got to get him in the new blue since he never wore it, so we're going to get him in the new blue today. So present Jose and with the Blue Jay. Thank you. Things are always tough. Right, I should be good. Thank you. All right, thanks. Cool. All right, I'll leave it to you. For a few individual okay. photos, please. Photographers, you're welcome to come forward. All right, on your screens this afternoon, Jose Bautista signing that one-day contract with the Toronto Blue Jays this afternoon. He's wearing, of course, the cap and uh, the new blue, as we heard from the CEO, the jersey that is on, and photographers taking that opportunity in. Uh, he's wearing this and he's signing this one-day contract so he can retire as a member of the team for which he has played 10 long seasons. In your hands, you can see that is a contract now, this comes just one day before uh, Bautista will be added to the team's level Thank of you, excellence. We'll ask you to step back. Which uh, honors the best players the in the franchise's tomorrow. history. It's going to be a big day tomorrow at the game. To the as whole well. Blue Jays organization, uh, the Rogers family, and um, everyone here for, for coming. Uh, as Mark said, this has been a long time coming. But as we know, there were some challenges a few years back. and. This was uh, the soonest we could get it done. I appreciate uh, the gesture and the one day contract, but um, I think everybody knew for a while that I had, you know, been retired, but this is a way to make it official. And um, what other way to make it better than just coming back here to Toronto and signing this uh, one day contract and making it uh, official official. So um, happy to be here and I can't wait for tomorrow. And I think I'll just open it up for questions. Great. 
So we'll open up it up to questions. Please raise your hand, wait for the mic, state your name and outlet, and limit to one question and one follow-up. Please raise your hand if you have a question. A lot of shy people today. Hi, Jose. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Stumble from Global News. Obviously, a lot of people in the city and the country sharing memories about your time uh, wearing that uniform in a slightly different shade. But I wonder what memory stands out most to you as you reflect back. Um, I don't think there's one. Just, you know, 10 years is a long time. So there are a lot of memories. So uh, a lot of great memories, a lot of great relationships and connections made here. So um, it's hard to pick just one. Uh, there were plenty. Uh, Everybody seems to go back to obviously the playoff series and the bat flip and those games, but for me, it's uh, it's hard to pick just one. So um, I don't know if I have a favorite. And the follow up, I guess, in terms of what you're most proud of here. I know you were talking the other day about um, you know sort of, and it was mentioned already in terms of elevating and bringing bringing baseball back in, in, into this country in many ways. Yeah, being a part of that, obviously, you know, we had great teams, and I was you know just one of the guys, but being able to kind of bring Blue Jays baseball back on the map for, for the city and for the country was, was a huge, uh, I feel, accomplishment for our groups. Uh, and I was happy to be a part of that. Hey, Jose. Over here. Uh, just the symbolism of signing the one-day contract and retiring, such a retiring with a Blue Jays uniform on. They didn't get to do, play your final game as a player, but the final moment in baseball, I guess, kind of like uh, having a Blue Jays uniform on. What does that mean to you? It's huge. Obviously, I, I owe a great deal to this franchise. They gave me a chance, and I was able to accomplish a lot here. So um, I definitely was already, in my head, retired as a Blue Jay. But to make it official, it's, it's kind of cool. And uh, this way, you know, fans can, can have their moment, too, and know that uh, I was proudly um, a member of the club, I guess, for, for the last uh, one last time. And, uh, it was officially the last club that I was a part of before uh, officially announcing the retirement. Jose, Steve Simmons, Toronto Sun. Um, you came here and people weren't sure who you were or what you were going to do. And Dwayne Murphy and Cito Gaston saw something in your swing and helped and made changes. How big an influence were those two gentlemen on the success that you had in your career? Huge. I would say they had some of the biggest impact. Um, and, you know, you're, you hit it right in the head. Those two guys definitely uh, worked with me behind the scenes a lot. Uh, even when I got here until I started playing every day, because it took almost a full year from when I got traded uh, till I saw some regular playing time. Um, it was a lot of work behind the scenes. and. Uh, I'm glad that I came to this organization at the time that it did because of everything that happened afterward. And uh, they are a big part of that. 2015 is probably the best baseball team the city has seen since the World Series years of, of 92 and 93. And I ran into someone from that team a few days ago who said it still bothers him that you didn't win the World Series that year when he believes you had the best team. When you look back to 2015 and think of how close you were, and in the end, what didn't happen. What are your thoughts on that? Not the same, but I, I could say that about every season I played. Uh, but that was the one, obviously, we were the closest uh, to achieving that. Uh, and I felt we had the most momentum, because if, if you remember, we had a, a lot of great additions at the deadline that year, and we kind of caught fire, and we were playing great baseball, and our confidence was riding high. Uh, and then we obviously beat the Rangers in a great series, uh, but you know, Kansas City was a great team as well. They had tough pitching and we couldn't get past them. But yeah, that definitely feels like the one that got away. Jose, um, you talked about Mike Wilner from Toronto Star. You talked about how much you enjoyed being a part of like the revitalization, the revitalization of baseball in Toronto. But when you got here, this was a team that had been mediocre for a decade and a half. and. You know, the stands were mostly empty when Doc wasn't pitching. What was it like for you to be a part of? How did it feel to see it turn from that to what you saw at the end of 2015 in the stands? Well, mediocre is a tough word, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there was a lot of great talent in those teams. But sometimes in baseball, it doesn't work out as easy and, and doesn't reflect in wins when you even have great, great groups of players playing together. But. Um, 
I don't know, it just kind of, it was good to see that, you know, with some winning, that passion and that love for the Blue Jays that you constantly hear people talking or heard people talking about at the time, uh, you know, was reflected with showing up in the stands and, and just getting to the ballpark every day and supporting the team uh, that way. Um, but it, we knew, like, people love the team. You could, just, you could see it on the streets, people wearing the gear, and just the conversations with friends and relationships across town. Um, and it just took a, took a few wins to get them to come out to the ballpark consistently, but it was, it was a great feeling to be a part of that. And you might not be able to specifically point to a favorite moment as a Blue Jay, but are there standout people, relationships that you can name that, you know, I know you'll forget some, but, but who stood out to you over your time here? Well, that's a, that's a tough question because I don't want to miss anybody uh, from naming that list. But um, I think you, you might have to wait till tomorrow for, um, for my speech to, to kind of see uh, all the names that I had in mind. Hey, Jose, Adrian Gobriel with CTV National News. I'm going to guess you've had some time to reflect on your career over the last few years. As you reflect on what it was like playing not just for a city but a country, what does Canada now mean to you? And what was it like playing for a nation of fans? Uh, it's huge. I mean, it's the only team that can you know, claim that. Uh, and you could feel that it was palpable, the energy and the love of fans across the nation. It was huge. Uh, it still is to this day, and these guys are lucky that they get to come out here every day and play with that much of a fan base behind them. And it's uh, one of the big pride, uh, prideful things about being Canadian, and I can see it even internationally because um, people try to identify and make sure people know that they're Canadians and they're Blue Jays fans, and sometimes that's the way they show you. So um, it, was a, it was a great feeling, and um, you know, I, I will forever remember that. Mike was nice and, and didn't ask you to point out some of your highlights, but if you had a few, what, what, what are some of the lasting memories you'll have, whether it be on the field or off the field, playing for the Toronto Blue Jays? I think making it to the playoffs twice kind of rises to the top. Um, then on the individual side, obviously hitting the home run for the bat flip and, and maybe hitting the 54, but um, again, I tend to remember more the relationships and the friendships and stuff like that than individual moments. Those, I know they're there and you can always go back on video and, and remember and watch, but um, I pay more attention to the other stuff. Jose Scott Hurst, CP24. When you see your name on the level of excellence with all the other Blue Jay greats, what will that mean to you and what emotions do you expect when you see your name up there? Well, I guess I'm going to have to wait because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, it, it's hard to kind of get ahead of that and, and answer that because I, I, I don't know yet, but um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't want to guess. So I'll let the moment kind of dictate that. And maybe you can ask me that tomorrow. Jose, it's so good to see you way back here. Over here. Hi. Okay. There you are. Good to see you again. It's uh, Dammit Mori with the Roz and Mocha Show on Kiss Honey 25. So good to see you. Want to find out when you sign a one day contract with the Toronto Blue Jays, do you get paid for that one day or is it a volunteer position? Um, I don't know. Maybe we have to ask uh, Mark on you that. Signed before reading it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I want you to take a peek at this. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a pretty extensive and complicated contract so if you can figure out how much the pay is in it you let me know no but uh it, this is great obviously to do so i'm extremely happy that i came here to do that um if it did i would probably gladly find a charity to donate to. hey jose welcome back to toronto uh john chidley hill from the canadian press i'm curious what you expect the fans reaction is going to be like in tomorrow's ceremony I don't know. I can tell you what I hope. I hope they enjoy it. I hope they have fun. And um, that's pretty much it. And then hopefully they, they get to cheer on the guys for the rest of the way. Um, and have you heard from any of your former Blue Jays teammates? And if so, who and what did they have to say? Well, I think they're all saving their message for uh, tomorrow. But um, I think a bunch of them are coming. So uh, I can't wait to see them tomorrow. Okay. Hi, Jose. Hello. It's Kayla from Global News Toronto. Uh, I just wanted to ask, what are you up to these days? What's keeping you busy now that this part of your career is wrapped up? Yeah, full-time dad. So that's a job in itself. Uh, 
that keeps him pretty busy. Uh, other than that, just exercising and staying healthy and um, you know, just looking over you know, a few little business endeavors that I got and, and just responsibly saving and managing what I was able to save. Jose, uh, you mentioned earlier the impact Cito and Dwayne Murphy had on your career. I'm just wondering, what lessons could there be drawn in terms of how that information resonated with you at that point in your career and how it allowed you to maybe unlock yourself? Are there, you know, they, this is obviously wasn't your first team. Is there something in the way that message was delivered and how you took it that allowed it to take at that point as opposed to maybe at different points in your career? I just think for myself, I don't know if there's any lessons for other guys, but for myself, it was just the urgency, you know? I was reaching that point in my career where uh, it was either gonna continue to be that utility guy, bench guy for the rest uh, of my career or, or try something different and hopefully it worked and, and kind of did. So um, that's the way that I look at it. And just taking you back to end of 2009 season and Roy Halladay gets traded and it looks like the franchise is gonna go down into sort of a significant rebuild. So what do you remember about what you felt about the direction of the franchise at that point in time and what you thought 2010, 2011 uh, at that point were, were gonna look like for the club? To be quite honest, I don't think I was uh, too worried about that at that point. I was still trying to you know, establish myself and figure out ways to help the team win games. Um, that's, I think that was the only thing on my mind at that point.